And welcome to the CNC Auto Show. We are cranking up another CNC Auto Show here this morning. And we want to tell all of you car lovers hello. And I am Aaron Clements. I'm John Ryan. And our goal is to give you information on ways to make your car, truck, or SUV safer and to make it more dependable and to make that baby last longer <laughs> for less money and less hassle. And we want to say thank you to each and every one of you that tuned in or logged into the show today. And we are here to take your phone calls. And that number is 706-863-5800. And for more information on this show and your car, and, and to watch this show live, you can go to ccautoshow.com, and you can watch us live on Facebook also. And I want to remind you that you can register to win. Now, this is really neat. A Yeti Tundra cooler, and it's from Napa Heating and, Air, Heating and Cooling Systems. And all you have to do to register to win is to post a picture of yourself and your car. Right. On the CNC Auto Show Facebook page, if you would like us while you're there, that would be sweet. <laughs> uh, but a picture of you and your car, and maybe just a few words about you and your car. There and you that go. would be really neat. And you would stand a chance on winning that beautiful cooler. Uh, we'll have the, uh, the judging will take place in just a couple of weeks. So be sure to get those entries in. It would be really neat. And also, if you're looking for a good, dependable auto repair facility, a great place to go is ccautoshow.com. You can just scroll down to a little area that says find a shop and punch on that button and you will be able to search for some of the best auto repair facilities in the country. And those are the Napa Auto Care Centers around the country. Okay, John Ryan, are we ready to crank her up and get flying? Yeah, I am. Man, we are sitting on go and you and your car will absolutely love today's show. The theme of the show is tricks and treats for your car. Mm -hmm. Cars work hard for people. They do. They do a lot. And they, they just sit out there in the cold <laughs> and sometimes in a garage, but, but more often than not out, out in the cold. Outside, yeah. And they're just waiting on you to get up mm -hmm. and waiting on you to push. And push and, you around. And like our... Uh, producer's uh deal wait and, and yours mm -hmm. uh wait for you just to walk over there and push that button to fire <laughs> them up before you walk outside yeah they're ready to go uh, those were the automatic starts it's kind of neat but they just sit there and wait on you and, and and then when you get ready they they play you some music they do yep. and they relax you yeah they, they listen to your singing which is horrible <laughs> okay so that's what we're going to talk about ways that you can treat and your car and also a few tricks for your car to make things a little bit easier. So buckle up and let's get started. Uh, you give us a call and that number 706-863-5800 and that's Saturdays 805 to 10. That's what we get out of the deal. What we like out of everything is to get your phone calls. That's what makes it fun for us. Yeah. So we're giving the information. We'll give, tell you anything we can about your car. You give us a call. I think that's fair enough. Don't you? I like it. Fantastic. Okay, we are going to go ahead and give the tech tip quiz. We like to give that a little bit early. And this story is partially true mm -hmm. uh, on the tech tip quiz. Billy owns a 2015 Ford F-150 truck. It was cold outside, so he decided to sit in the truck and deer hunt. Mm. Is that legal? I don't know. No. no. I didn't think so. Well, he was sitting on the passenger side but saw a deer on the left side of the truck. He held his barrel of his thirty out 6 rifle out the left window and shot the deer. That shot ended up costing him over $1,500 and some cold mornings for him and his kids. How did the deer shot cost him that much money and even affect his kids? If you know the answer, give us a call. Mm. We ready to go to the phone calls? Yeah, let's go to Edwin. He's first up. Edwin, welcome to the CNC Auto Show. Good morning. And <laughs> what can we help you with? Well, I think it's... Uh... Uh, nice that y'all are talking about the ones that have been uh, the old vehicles that have been pushing you around for so long, helping you out. And yeah, need, they, they deserve some, some praise, people. don't they? Yep, they do. They need some love. I've, oh. I've got a <clears throat> my first uh, vehicle uh, was a '71 F100 pickup truck, uh -huh. old Ford, and I've had it since I was 15, uh -huh. and uh, it's 
about there killed me a couple of times and it saved my life <laughs> a couple of times. And uh-huh. uh, there's been a lot of living and hauling going on in that thing. Well, it's, uh, it sat up for a little while and I, you know, the rubbers, you know, the, the rubber around the glass and uh-huh. so pretty much all the rubber is deteriorated. Yeah, that yeah. little felt stuff oh. that goes around the window on the inside. Yeah. Right, right. I need to put all the new tracks in the windows and all that stuff, but, uh, I, you know, it, it ran real good for a very long time. I put a short block in it probably in the early, uh huh, used maybe. But uh, it's it's been a it's been a champion. And Edwin, I'm gonna mention something to you about that. Yeah. Now you, and I don't know if you have seen this part of it yet. Mm-hmm. But what used to be a '71 truck that's not worth very much is now worth an unbelievable ab- uh, amount. Yeah, it is. Uh, right. um, <laughs> <laughs> an unbelievable uh, amount when you go see these trucks in car shows. Yep. It is amazing what these trucks are selling for, and and that and that includes the seventy ones. Yeah, it, it's it just and and people are are making them look so nice. Now that's kind of restored condition, but when you look at it, well, even unrestored. Well, that's what I was gonna say. Even amount. in the condition, his sounds like. You but know, what it's kind of... what that's good about that is that makes that money that you're spending. Uh, re- repairing that truck, and not only are you doing things that make you feel good because you're bringing back memories and you, you're spending money on something you really like, but also it's not wasted money because if for some reason you decided to get that money back, I just about bet you could sell it yeah. and get the money in more that you got invested I, in it. I consider it an investment. Uh-huh. Uh, truly, there nothing. there is nothing like paid for when it comes to a vehicle. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that's my number one. Yeah. If somebody asks me what kind of car I like, that's the one I mentioned. Yeah. <laughs> paid for is, is awesome. Well, I, I let it set up for a couple of years, and it, it got where it wouldn't crank up. Yeah. And all through the fall, last fall, I said, dang it, I don't have time. But uh, I would charge the battery, and I'd try to turn it over, and it just wasn't firing. Uh-huh. And so uh, just a couple of weeks back, I, I decided I was going to rebuild the carburetor because I wasn't getting any gas into the carburetor. So I replaced the needle valve and all this stuff. Well, it turned to find out that the the old carburetor that I put in, it was a rebuilt one back in probably 05, 04. Uh-huh. Yeah. It ran perfect right out of the box. I, I tweaked it a little bit and got the idle right. <clears throat> but when I took this one apart, the needle valve did not have the retaining clip on top of it to attach it to the float valve. Uh huh. You didn't realize that until I took it out. Hmm. Uh, you know, that was as it was from the factory because hmm. I had not been in it um, or from rebuilding, you know, anyway. Right. But, uh, so I, I, it, I determined once I shot it all, cleaned it out with carburetor cleaner, put it all back together, I still wasn't getting any juice up there fill up the bowl, but I wasn't getting anything, so I uh, but I said, well, just disconnect it and, and just let the let the fuel pump run, put your finger over it, and see if you can you know, if you've got the pressure pushing right. on it. Uh-huh. Got about four or five pounds of pressure or one pound of pressure or whatever. So I did that yesterday afternoon finally after putting this new kit back together this week. And uh, dang if she didn't fire off. You know, I could get gas and pour it down in the throat of the of the uh, carburetor, and then right. fire up and just run so pretty. Yeah, but it wasn't getting past the uh, past the pump, uh-huh. you know, uh, your pump on the front of the uh, carburetor. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm just, you know, it runs awesome, oh. uh, accelerates awesome now. But I just need to know what, uh, how do you tune it? It, it smells very rich. I got the needle valves at the bottom. Uh-huh. Uh, hey, Edwin, 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 if you'll hold just one second, yeah, we we'll will, let you know. We're gonna take a real quick break, if, and and as soon as we return, we're gonna get some great ideas on adjusting that. We'll be right back with the CNC Auto Show. And welcome back to the CNC Auto Show. I want to give a real quick tip about uh, <laughs> treats for your cars. 
and the treat would be to wash it regularly. Every day our cars are exposed to the sun, to grease, to grime, to acid rain, uh, tree sap, dead bugs, and worst of all, those dreaded bird poo-poos <laughs> that drop on there. And that's bad. <laughs> that's bad news because they have acid and it will eat through your paint if you don't wash it off. So uh, wash that stuff off and it'll make the paint last a lot longer. We were talking to Edwin, and Edwin has a 71 Ford. Yeah. And he had mentioned he went through some carburetor issues that he finally got squared away, and now he uh, seems to be running rich. Does that sound correct, Edwin? That's pretty good. I mean, you know, it, it always smelled like uh, it was pretty strong even back in the day. Okay. But, you know, I mean, you, you could probably run another vehicle off the exhaust. Okay? <laughs> yeah. And you're right. Now, cars did run uh, you could smell a lot more fumes coming out the back of them years ago uh, for two reasons. One, they just wasn't as efficient as they were. And two is there was no catalytic converter to clean the air before it come out. So a lot of people uh, complain about all the emission stuff. And I tell them if we didn't have it on cars, we all wouldn't be able to breathe right now as many cars are on the road. So all of this stuff oh. is a good thing. You can tell by that one. Now on your car, what I would recommend doing, you got one of two things. There's a little... I want to make sure that you did replace a little uh, I was trying to think of the name of the little extra accelerator pump under the bottom of that carburetor uh, it yeah. let do what now uh, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, it let extra air in when you give it the gas to a certain point and mm -hmm. and uh, and if it did that was under heavy acceleration sometimes I would see those leak extra fuel but if you put a carburetor kit in there that came with the kit second thing oh is you just want to run your the little screws in until the like engine the starts plate. running rough and then run it back out just about a turn and a uh, until it's at its highest rpm and the highest vacuum have a vacuum gauge hooked up to it and then push it back in a, maybe about a quarter of a turn and if you do that on both sides it's probably running at its peak uh if it don't if it runs way too rich then uh, you may have your float level set in the wrong position. Uh -huh. Okay. okay. Uh, so the float level, basically, that, that adjusts the the, uh, the, the, the level of the float. And if it, it, well, it, it does, adjusts the level of the fuel in the bowl. Yeah, it lets it, it determines how much fuel is going to be in the bowl at, at, when it's completely full, full yeah. at idle. And if and the float level cool. set wrong, it would let it come up too much fuel come in and it would be pulled too much fuel in at idle. Okay. Now that's, that's where that umbrella valve, that rubber thing that you push through or uh -huh. pull through. Yeah. And there's two holes. There's one for the umbrella valve and then the hole above it. Is mm -hmm. that where the, the level of the gas lines up in the bowl? Well, now you're talking about the float level on the, on how much fuel is in the bowl. The other two items, the other two items you have is in the front of the carburetor. You have your accelerator pump, which right. there's that little thing you pull through in in little right. plastic uh, rubber nipple that sticks through there, and mm -hmm. uh, and that's your accelerator pump. But there's another valve underneath the bottom of the carburetor with a little cover mm -hmm. over it. Those right. tend to leak over time, but more than likely you replaced that when I you did. um if all the when rubber you did. in it was, was so stiff it was not flexible at all. So that you know the the uh, compression and uh, you know the pumping action of those rubber gaskets it was just not flexible at all. Yeah. So mm -hmm. everything I could change I did change. Okay. One thing that was different though, and I compared everything before I put it back together, the the valve seat. On, for the needle valve, the original one, uh, you know, is a copper or brass uh, mm -hmm. seat. The, compared to the new one, the new one was uh, 16th or 30, you know, two, uh, it was a, a, a appreciably shorter. Right. Okay. So it's lower in the bowl. Plus the original had four, uh, you know, Outlets are not jets, really, but there there were four holes around like passages, it. Like you would say, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, and then and then the the new one is just two large ones, and they're just cut through the side. I tell you, there uh, might be uh, some other stuff that would be good if I talked to you on that one. Would you want to give me a call at at, at work in at seven zero six seven? 
Yeah, 706-724-0900. And I believe I could even get you some pictures of that to what, show you some of the things. That was you it could, called the power valve? Is that what you call it? Yeah, the thing? power valve is the valve that I find leaking. If that wasn't replaced, then I'm going to recommend one uh, on doing that. And I can tell you how to tell if it's bad also. So uh -huh. so definitely give me a call. And and I tell you what, better yet, uh, if, if you'd like, we could post that on Facebook. Would that be good? Uh, well, you know, I don't know. I mean, I like to like to get some, you know, I got to replace all the rubber. I think yeah. about the, the rebuild or, or just <clears throat> getting back to a restoration. Right. I don't want to get it so pretty that I didn't want to drive it in yeah, the woods. Yeah, I or agree. But, up with it, but I just need to give it some love because it's been setting up. I, I mean, agree. I do need to put fast and put new rubber all the way around, uh, you know, just to. Well, give know, me a call to, on Monday morning if you would. I surely will. Well, I'll try to. I've got a, a pretty fast week coming up here, well, but uh, I'd love to, love to tackle this thing. I would love to give you some other ideas. And, Edwin, we appreciate it. Sure. Thank you much. Thank you. Bye-bye. The number to call, 706-863-5800. That's 8, 8, 8 o'clock to 10, uh, Saturdays 8 to 5. All right. Let's go over to, to Henry. We got All right, Henry, we got welcome to the CNC Auto Show, and what can we help you with? Well, good morning, gentlemen. I tell you, y'all are mighty patient, and I appreciate uh, your uh, show on Saturday. I have two questions sure. for you. Uh -huh. They're very simple. One is I have a Ford F-150 2011, and this summer I turned the uh, air conditioning on, and the air conditioning comes out of the defrost only. Okay. Yeah. And now, and the now, the previously, in the winter, uh, the heat did not come out of the outlet. Mm -hmm. And that's those are my two questions. Well, we got some great, uh, great <laughs> tips for you and some great ideas on what's wrong. But is there any chance you could hold just for one second so we could take a quick break and then as soon as we come back, answer yeah. the question. Okay, good. Oh, man, that'll help a lot. Thank you, Henry, and we will be right back with more of the CNC Auto Show. Just an old half-ton, short bit Ford. My uncle bought new in 64. Daddy got it right because the engine was smoking. Cup and we would like to welcome you back to the CNC Auto Show, and we have been talking with Henry it's got a 2011 Ford F-150 that the AC vents and the heater vents and the defroster vent, it's all doing some stuff. They're not working when he wants. Is that right, Henry? You got it, buddy. All right, we got it. Okay, John Ryan, what do you think? Well, my suspicion would be the actual actuator that controls the function as far as where the vent you know, position is. Uh, which would be the mode door actuator. Unfortunately, on some of the, the newer model Fords, they have a little motor that, of course, controls that dampener or door that directs the airflow, you know, of course. Actuator and mode doors. It, th that all just makes it sound expensive. They're electrically controlled. Well, it's not the, the part yeah. itself is not that expensive. It's where some of them are located yeah, that well, is expensive. Of course, we always joke they built the truck around them. You know, they yeah. set them on a bench and then built the truck around it because they're pretty tough to get to. Um, yeah. But, Henry, but a lot of times. Like he may be having trouble with two of them, though, because if you've got a, he mentioned the defrost, which would be a mode control mm -hmm. actuator and something to do with temperature. Didn't you mention? Well, I think he said, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Henry, you said also uh, previously the heat wouldn't come out of the defrost at one time, too. That, that that's why no uh, no uh, hot air. So winter is coming on, and I need to find some hot air. <laughs> yeah, I imagine so. Uh, and and yeah. again, unfortunately, they have had a ton of issues. It's it's either it's normally one or the other that fails on it. It's either the uh, temperature actuator, which of course was what uh, selects the temperature, mm -hmm. hot or cold. Or the mode door. Unfortunately, it sounds like both of yours have gone out. Now, what a technician would do is scan that control module, the HVAC module, to see if there's any trouble codes in there. Because they are pretty good about setting codes. There's always that instance where they don't. Um, but based on that, and then they, of course, check to make sure it's got the right power and ground and circuitry going to it to you know make sure it's being controlled by that uh, HVAC module. Um, but chances are it most likely needs both of those. Yeah, Henry, we will tell you that we run into a fair amount of those. But the only other thing is, 
it's it's kind of a good idea and an advised idea to when you have that dash removed is to go ahead and replace all of them anyways um mainly because uh, of course nine times out of ten if they have a problem like that on such a new vehicle they redesign that part and you'd be getting an updated part so you don't have to go in there again henry henry did you see how he kind of slid that in about having to remove your dash yeah, he slid all of it. <laughs> he just he just greased me up for the high price. That's the next deal I want to ask you about. What kind of money are you talking about? Well, see, all I did was set up Aaron for the price part. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I feel it coming. Okay, boy. <laughs> Henry, uh, I can just give you really very, very <laughs> rough ideas on something like that because they there vary a huge amount. They do. It depends if it's got a console, truck. the seat arrangement. Of course, you do want to spend a little bit of time oh, confirming it. But um, I, I would my my wild stuff. I'm gonna say eight to fourteen, and I realize that's a now that's that a, would be oh. recommending doing all of them. Of yeah, course. all of them, There's, and I realize that's a pretty good spread. Uh, but there's so much involved, but yeah. that does give you an idea that it is some serious, uh, serious uh, coins. There. <laughs> okay, okay. But it won't well, sound that bad not... when it's thirty outside. <laughs> yeah, to, Henry. No, the I, alternative I is is one of, is getting one of those little snuggles that they advertise on TV. But you <laughs> snuggy. can't. Snuggy. You yeah, snuggy. But your feet can't do the gas pedal very good. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> I was well, thinking like a twenty dollar cigarette lighter heater from Napa. Yeah, well, at least at least my seat warmer works. I got a seat warmer in here, so it works. So I can stay warm a little bit. Oh no! I'll have so do you to, just I'll flip? You go on the back for a little while, then on the front for a little while. <laughs> Henry, you know yeah, what those seat warmers work good for? If you got one on the passenger side, they are good to keep you warm. I think. No, yeah. you pick up the pizza and you set your pizza on that seat and cut that on. And man, your pizza oh, yeah. is nice and warm when you get home. Oh yeah. Oh. Okay. And then the well, grease from the pizza good. box leaks into the seat <laughs> heater, and there you go. Then you clean it up. Yeah. Got a dishwasher in here. Yeah. Well, fellas, I appreciate it. Well, sorry we had bad news I'll for you. Well, I'll probably have to come see you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say I have to spend that kind of money, but I'll probably have to do it. But, yep. but I'll come down and see you guys. Okay. Henry, we appreciate your phone call. Yes, sir. Right. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Bye -bye. Number to call is 706-863-5800. That's Saturday mornings, 8.05 to 10 from anywhere that you might be. And, John Ryan, who will we be talking to next? Uh, next will be David, and then after that's Chris. David, welcome to the CNC Auto Show. And what can we help you with? Well, first off, I have the answer to the Texas question. And Whoa, Texas David, question. does that mean that you have a desire to be the American dream? Absolutely, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I'm sorry. I spoke before you was finished, and you was telling me something else about this. It was, and also I have a question about a transmission issue with Civic. You know, we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be ready for both. First, let's get you on stage. All right. Okay, David, wipe that sweat off your forehead, and be still. Absolutely. And answer our tech tip quiz. Well, due to air dispersal uh, from the fire of the uh, rounds, uh -huh. he blew out his windows. Mm. Well, you know, <laughs> John Ryan said that too. Well, David, that's kind of the funny thing. I have no clue what the answer is either. Yeah, Aaron just comes up with this stuff. He didn't have the notes earlier, but he but he was saying, "No, da David, that's not it." So I, I know I blew out my uh, I blew out my front windshield with uh, putting too many uh, subwoofers in my uh, blazer back in the day. That wow. will happen, yeah. And it really blew out. The whole thing solid. It was it never broke. It just blew out and landed on the hood. <laughs> what would David any uh, any rough idea what that might do to your eardrum? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I wasn't in it. I had, uh, oh, okay. I had, I had, I had, uh, I had remote started my car, oh, okay. and I didn't, uh, and I didn't turn down the music. Uh huh. And uh, mm. it decided to blow up my windshield. Mm. So all those people that, that that get in their car and play the music really, really loud, it, and it blows a windshield out. You can imagine what that might do to an eardrum. Okay, David, yes. what's the um, what's the thing on the um, transmission on the Civic? What's it doing? Um, it started flipping and then just completely stopped. Uh, like it, when it's cold, it runs fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, after about 10 minutes of running, it just uh, stops uh, shifting gears completely. 
That's not good. I think it's a third clutch pack because it's a 2001, mm-hmm. and they are notorious for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, unfortunately they are. Uh, David, just like you said, uh, when the clutch packs you know, wear thinner and thinner, when that fluid is full, of course, or sorry, not full, but cold, of course it's a, it's a not necessarily a thicker viscosity, but of course the fluid is thicker as a hot fluid that is thinned out a bit. Yeah. And of course, as the clutches, you know, mate together, if you have a thicker fluid in there, uh, you know, chances are it'll hold the power. Um, probably what you'd find is if you were really hard on that car cold, it would probably immediately start slipping. Uh, but you're right. Those, those clutch packs are pretty bad about failing, uh, you know, somewhat prematurely, you know, Honda's kind of always known for a really long lasting transmission, but on those, they just unfortunately didn't, I don't know if they switched, you know, clutch manufacturers or if it was an apply problem. Um, but the big thing is, of course, you know, you would think to yourself, like, why can't I just put a thicker fluid in there? But then it won't go through the valve body. It won't go through the solenoids and stuff like that. So I think you're on the right track as far as it most likely needing to rebuild a reman unit. Yeah. I, uh, I, uh, I have, uh, since bought another car, I'm going to give it away. So I'll just also call and try to find out a price point. I was going to give it to a buddy of mine that's going through some hard time. Right. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to get a, get a good price quote to give him. Because I'm just gonna ha- I'm just gonna hand him the title of the car and say, "Here you go, buddy. All you have to do is fix the transmission. You got a pretty much brand new car because I've replaced almost everything else on it." Right. Yeah. And he may be able to. He he more than likely will end up needing to get it rebuilt though because uh, a lot on a lot of yeah, vehicles a uh, used if transmission. If you do a used transmission, you're gonna run into the same issue. Exactly. Issues. That's exactly what I was gonna say. So. But it sounds like we confirmed what you already were uh, were thinking there, David. But it does, and, and unfortunately, it does sound like that's what it is. And uh, biggest question uh, between twelve and two thousand uh, dollars, David. What? How many miles are on it? Hundred and twenty. Hundred and twenty. Yeah, I think that's somewhere in the in the right area. You know, they say anything that rolls down the road, you know, like drivable is fifteen hundred bucks, no matter what. Um, so you know, somewhere in the thousand dollars to two thousand, you know, just really like you said, you've done a lot of work to it. So of course that you know adds value to it. Um, so somewhere in that range, I think you're right. Yeah, I was just uh, I was just making sure because I wanted to I wanted to, when I gave it to him, I wanted to. I have an idea of what oh, you're talking about the price with, of the transmission then is yeah, what you're the fix the transmission. Yeah, I would yeah. I would put it more like um I 20, thought you were talking about 2500 or a little bit no, more than 2500. I'm giving him the car. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah. I, I thought you were talking about the value of the yeah. car. Sorry. I would probably go a little yeah. bit higher than the 2000, but you you do have some people that still rebuild transmission if you oh. found somebody that would rebuild it then you may get it for that or or maybe a little bit more than that. But if you have to put a reman in it, I would say you would probably spend more than the two thousand. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Well, we sure do appreciate your call. Okay, the number to call is seven oh six eight six three five eight hundred. We're gonna take a real quick break. And as soon as we return, we'll be going to Glenda and Chris and uh well, Chris and, and Glenda. And <laughs> we'll be right <laughs> back after this. Sitting in the back of And welcome back to the CNC Auto Show, and we are ready to go to the phone calls, and let's go to Chris. And Chris, what can we help you with? Hey, hey guys, how you doing? And, and enjoy your show. Man, we are doing lovely. He had to think about that, Chris. <laughs> yeah, yeah, beautiful day, man. It beautiful is. Day. Yeah. Listen, I got a quick question. I'm seeing a lot of, um, of flooded cars on the market uh, and you know for sale. My question to you is, what's the downside risk on buying those on you know, on a lot of different levels? I mean, um, is it, I mean, can you buy one? Or, you know, is it uh, you know just Kind of help me out here. With sure. You. I can tell you that there's some definite risk involved. Um, you know, okay. it does depend on, like, what vehicle you're looking at. For instance, if you bought a BMW that had flood damage, uh, the problems may not be present right now. Say it dried out, everything seems to be functioning and whatnot. 
Um, but months mm -hmm. down the road, you may find an airbag light, and then you may find some communication codes, and you may find the radio mm -hmm. stop working. And the reason for that is because when the moisture is in there and the car dries out, everything's fine, everything seems to work okay. And then as mm -hmm. the moisture corrodes over the time, it starts developing mm -hmm. problems. The reason I used an example of a BMW is, of course, it has like 50 modules in like even their base model. So when things yeah. like that get wet, you know, the problems kind of creep up on you. You think you bought this great car for a great deal, no issues, and slowly but surely they start coming up. Now, if you bought a Silverado truck that doesn't have many modules in it that are, you know, located low in the vehicle, um, you know, you won't have so many, many electronic problems. The biggest thing is knowing the condition of the flood. Like, for instance, did it get higher than the mirrors? Like, did the engine, you know, uh, you know, pull in water? All those kind of things are definitely things you want to kind of and take into account. sometimes you can do that by doing a good inspection of the car. You can see a water line, especially many times behind the door panels. You can see where That's the right. water line was. And John Ryan's 100% sure, uh, correct on where those modules are located. There's some cars... In, in cars in the past, I used to say if the water got above the dash, I wouldn't touch it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. now uh, what happens, though, is it used to be very few electronics were uh, below the dash. Right. Now mm -hmm. you see some cars with electronics all under the floorboard. Well, uh, and that's why I used a higher-end car like a Land Rover, you know, use fiber optic communication line, lines. And, of course, you can imagine if water got in there, you, you have a boat anchor. There's no – there's very – few of those that you know kind of come back on the road but then even <clears throat> if it just gets into the areas of the wheels uh your wheel bearings start going bad after a short period of time and here's the bad part and john ryan's already mentioned this also it won't do it all at one time you, yep. so you can say well i'm gonna just get rid of this thing it hits you with a wheel bearing for a couple of hundred bucks yep. and then it hits you for another <laughs> module about 800 next thing you know you got five thousand bucks and the car still mm -hmm. acting up on you yeah, so yeah i get scared yeah, of, yeah. Of, of flood cars and i would do everything i could unless and, you're a professional right and you're doing work yourself i would never sell it to somebody else but if you say well i take well, that, risk all myself then you may decide to do it that's also something i was going to mention of course if it was claimed on the insurance now it's you know deemed a salvage title so there's all kinds of loops you have to jump through um, the, the reason I say that is because when you get it inspected, if it has a salvage title, if something as simple as a ABS light is on, it doesn't matter why that light's on. You have to fix it before it will pass. Now, I'm sure that changes from state to state, but our state, yeah, you know, yeah, no right, lights right, can right. be on. And, and that makes it difficult because, of course, you know, if it's a thousand dollar module, you have to repair it before you can tag but it. But here's what happens also, and this is for people that are. Uh, that are thinking about getting a car and they're wondering whether they should get it inspected. What happens is these cars are sold with a salvage title. In other words, totaled out. Then it goes to another state and they clean up the title. Then another state yeah, and they right. clean up the title. And then they come back and they sell yeah, it as a regular one, car. One and a lot of people say, well, it wasn't, it wasn't on Carfax. Things are only showed on Carfax yeah. if it is uh, public information. Yeah. So mm -hmm. a lot of things, mm -hmm. if something didn't go through the insurance company and they just said, well, I didn't have full coverage, I'm going to just get rid of this car, and mm -hmm. it may not ever go on anything like Carfax. Carfaxes are good, though. I, yeah, I highly good. recommend them, but they don't mm -hmm. show everything. So you ask some great questions on not only for what you're talking about, but also to help other people. So so basically what you're, what you're referring to when it comes to you know, what uh, flooded cars is the electronics is what, you, what you're speaking oh, about. Oh, wheel so bearings, uh, wheel yeah. bearings, yeah. electronics. Yeah, uh, the electronics is probably more the more expensive thing. But, for instance, if the engine <clears> was <throat> underwater, of course, somebody, if it's running, of course, somebody had to, you know, remove the plugs, you know, kind of get the hydrolock out, you know, of course, spin it over and all that. And, I mean, let's face it, that's not good for a vehicle. It's not good for anything. Um, they can mm -hmm. be, you know, you know, repaired to where they'll run, but even that, you'll if see car accelerated wear. And you remove the plugs, get the water out, put the plugs back in, it'll run. But my experience has been about 10,000 miles because what happened when it Start hydrolocked, smoking, yep. it flat spotted a bearing, and that bearing's going to build up a lot of extra heat, usually goes bad in about 10,000 miles. I got it. I got it. Okay, guys, well, you answered my question, I, I can say. <laughs> yeah, my, my best quick there. answer though is stay away from them. Yeah, well, that or it's got to be a good price, like free, <laughs> like free. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 
All Thank right, you. Chris, we thanks. appreciate the call. Number uh, well, I'm gonna. I tell you what. Let's just go straight to Glenda so that we can answer her question. All right. Hey, Glenda. Welcome to the CNC Auto Show. And what can we help you with? Thank you. I got a quick question. I changed the um, my brake pads and rotors mm-hmm. recently, and now the reservoir for the brake fluid uh-huh. it's over full. And I was just wondering, should I siphon it out? Will it hurt it? Or Ooh, you know, I take love it? that question. That is fantastic. Yeah. You. Uh, I. I tell you my part, and then you might want to add some to it. Uh, I'm gonna first tell you the reason that your brake fluid went up is as the pads wear the brake um, the pistons push out and the fluid occupies that space so the brake fluid gets a little bit low well sometimes Mm -hmm. before the brakes are replaced somebody says oh the brake fluid's a little low i'm gonna add some so they add some to it bring it up to full then when you put the Mm -hmm. new pads on there you push the pistons back in and then that brake fluid goes up higher so then it's overfilled and you are correct in making sure it's at the only the full level because when that brake fluid gets hot it expands and if it's already at the top and don't have anywhere to go, it's going to push on those calipers, push on those pistons, applying brake pressure, and wear your brakes out early. So you definitely want to make it to wear it's down. Now, I can tell you what I do. John Ryan might have another trick. What you got? If it's not real over full, I'll mm-hmm. take a very clean, uh, like a paper towel is mm-hmm. what I normally use. Mm-hmm. And I'll make double sure that don't get on the paint, though, because brake fluid on paint will eat it up. Mm-hmm. But I dip that paper oh. towel in there. Just briefly and let it uh, suck up a lot of yeah. it, and then I will take it out, and then I'll turn the paper towel and dip it in a little bit, and then let it out, and then I'll throw it away. I'll tell you the dollar store method. All right, what is it? Go buy a turkey baster. Oh, I like that one. And just pull a little bit of fluid out. Um, but I will say the best way to adjust brake fluid level is having a BG brake flush done. Uh, the brake flush actually uses brand new brake fluid. It puts it under pressure on top of that master cylinder cap there. And then, of course, it forces it through all four wheels. You bleed it just like a conventional brake system. Um, and then the, the machine, act well, the operator, but the machine can adjust the uh, brake fluid level there. So you're kind of getting two things. You're getting the maintenance side of it, and you're getting the fluid corrected. Okay. okay. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, great question. Thank you. We do appreciate your call. And we have not gave a huge number of tips having to do with the uh, stuff to do with the uh, treating your car. Right. So I'll give one or two more quick ones. Uh, get a plastic bag, like if you go to the grocery store and you have a plastic bag. Yeah. Save some of those bags. Put them in the trunk and use them for trash bags in your car. That way you can just have one sitting there, and then that way when you clean it out, you can uh, have everything in at one time. Uh, If you want to put keys on your key ring, Mm -hmm. uh, use a staple remover, and it's got that little, you can push it together and And open up the the key ring. And, and put a lot of different keys on your ring like I've that. I've seen you stab your finger with a knife doing that. Yeah, so at least we squeeze two, two of them in. <laughs> All right, the time clock's on E. We need to pull over for now, but we'll be back on the road in no time. I'm Aaron Clements with co-host John Ryan Mooney, and our show producers are Dominic Frito and Sandy Klein. And hello, car lovers, and welcome to the CNC Auto Show. And I am Aaron Clement. I'm John Ryan. And we would both like to say welcome to the show. And our goal is to give you some great information on ways to make your car, truck, or SUV safer, to make it more dependable, and to make it last longer for less money and less hassle. We want to say thank you to all of you that tuned in and logged in. We're here to take your call, 706 863 5800. For more information on your car, go to ccautoshow.com. Remember that we have a contest going on. That's at CC Auto Show on Facebook. Post a picture of you and your car, and you will stand a chance on winning a Yeti cooler from Napa Heating and Cooling Systems. I mean, they have some fantastic parts also. We use a bunch of that stuff, the water pumps and the radiators and just all the things that they have. Uh, Love them. Uh, you can also go to ccautoshow.com and you can pick out a, uh, a find a shop. Yeah. And there's a little button there in the middle that just says find a shop. And you'll see, you can click on it, put in your location, and you'll find a list of some fantastic shops all around the country. And these, those are Napa Auto Care Centers. We have a fantastic show planned for today. This is going to be really good. You and your car will love it. It's tricks and treats for cars, 
and we'll be uh, giving some ideas on ways to save money on cars, ways to give your car that experience that it deserves. So buckle up and let's get started. And John Ryan, who will we be talking to first? Uh, first up is John. Hello, John, and welcome to the CNC Auto Show. What can we help you with? Hey, Aaron, just a couple of quick questions. Yes, sir. Uh, maintaining my car. Uh, do you? I can't. Uh, I've misplaced my uh, record jacket on my car. Do you keep a listing of what has been done to it? Absolutely. And keeping a list of cars, a history of a vehicle, is a, is a very, very good thing. And, yes, we can just do a printout and give you all the information of everything that's been done on the car since I think about uh, it, we, our history goes back to about 2005 on car. No, earlier than that. Yeah, it goes way back. Yeah, way back. Yes. Okay. But the answer is big time yes. Okay. Well, I'll bring it in. I'm getting ready to go on a trip. And uh, my next question is, uh, <clears throat> is it recommended to get the differential flush? Yeah, absolutely. It depends on how many miles, but yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. About how many miles to get it flushed? Well, it's something that's always overlooked. Now, they say if that 100,000 miles is the first service, but it depends on application. Uh, for instance, if you had a boat, you know, you're backing into the water and, and there's the possibility that, you know, water has entered the differential. Um, that's one case scenario. Uh, if it's a vehicle that kind of has uh, normal wear and tear that's kind of known for, you know, a differential, that would be a time to do it earlier than normal. 55 miles per hour. Uh, if you're going 55 miles per hour on a <laughs> Sunday, that's also a... <laughs> John, John, mention to John Ryan what uh, type vehicle you have, though. It's a 2014 uh, Dodge Durango. And how many miles are on it? Uh, 108, but that's all travel miles. Yeah, I mean, I think that's prime time to do it. Yeah. Uh, right at 100,000, uh, the service is really cool, especially with Durango's. Most Chrysler products have a limited slip rear end um, differential. And, of course, what that does, of course, obviously pow puts power to the wheel that's spinning and the, the you know the one that has traction uh, so that, of course, it pulls. So uh, there's a series of clutch packs in there, uh, the way Chrysler does it. And, and, of course, over a period of time, those clutches wear, of course, you know, going around a turn and whatnot so that fluid is completely removed uh, there's a cleaner that goes in there uh, to kind of clean and, and protect the case the bearings and all that and then after that the system is refilled uh, of course to the proper level um, and then of course it's a long last fluid so definitely a good service okay great uh, what time do you open monday uh 7 30 yeah 7 30 okay uh, make some coffee and i'll see you then sounds great john thank you Thank you. Okay, the number to call, 706-863-5800. We, we will do a very quick tech tip quiz, and after the tech tip quiz, we will do our uh, car minute All right. with with each one. Okay, and, of course, we do have a tech tip quiz. Winner will receive a I Answer to Tech Tip Quiz golf shirt prize package, and that includes a coffee mug or hat and, of course, the beautiful prize uh, shirt that you can win. Uh, this is different than it was in the previous hour okay. uh, because it's important to get this one in this weekend. Sherry lives in Flagstaff and works for Mary Kay Cosmetics. At 1 a.m., she left her home in Phoenix and drove two and a half hours to Flagstaff for an early meeting. On the way, she did something that made her look much younger. What did she do? Hmm. And if someone has the answer, then they just give us a call. All right. I wanted to, uh, during my moment here of mentioning some things that uh, that I did during the week, uh, I went to two automotive advisory meetings mm -hmm. this week. And one was at a, an Augusta Technical College, and the other was at a high school, Harlem High School. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and those, uh, those instructors there, you just would not believe how much they care about those kids that are going through those classes. I and, can say that I know that for sure because I've gone through them. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what I mentioned to them. All the the most fantastic technicians I've ever been uh, met. Yeah, go through those type courses. Right, and uh, usually uh, one of those two. Now, the part that I want to mention is to two people. One is that we need to support those schools absolutely and that education because there are a lot of vehicles on the road and someone in the years or 
to come are going to need to repair those vehicles. Yeah, and it can be a fantastic opportunity for kids now because you're 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 learning a huge amount about computer systems, about the mechanical parts of the vehicles, about fluids, right. dynamics, just so many things. And it's such an interesting job. It it can be a great uh, great class yeah. and a great career. Well, I think too some of the things they're kind of overlooked. Like you said, the computer side of it. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people think working on cars means you're up under a car, mm -hmm. and it's not the case anymore. There's yeah. a lot of technicians that literally have a uh, op, you know stall, uh -huh. and they are hooked to a computer, and they're in an office, you know, rewriting a program or uh -huh. customizing the program. Yes. So there's there's whole or different looking aspects. or researching the vehicle or researching the problem. Right. And my second part, though, is other repair shops are going to need to support these schools also yeah. and help to do things to, for them to grow and for them to, to take care of their kids. Mm -hmm. uh, because if they don't, one day we're going to look around and there's not going to be technicians to do the work. To repair it, yeah. Uh, so I'm urging everyone to get involved in that. Okay. I like it. Mine's a little bit different. It's more of a, uh, I guess you would say, technical uh, you know, job case study type thing. We had a 2011 uh, Buick Regal. Uh, uh -huh. It's got the little 2.4 little f f uh, four cylinder in it, and it had a catalyst efficiency code. And there's, you know, they're kind of notorious for bad catalytic converters, but actually what causes it was uh, oil consumption. We pulled the dipstick. There was only one quart of oil, you know, left in the oil pan. And uh, believe it or not, it only had a thousand miles since it had been changed. So obviously it should have been full. Uh, it had a very bad consumption problem. And of course, the catalytic converter almost filters that oil. You don't see the smoke like you used right. to. Uh, so we, of course, m you know, monitored the data stream and, and did detect that the uh, catalytic converter was shot, basically. Uh, it was not efficient at all. So unfortunately, that vehicle actually is not a recall, but it does have some bulletins out that the piston rings actually seize to the pistons. Mm -hmm. And of course, every cycle of the up and down motion, the oil control ring is not wiping the cylinder back clean. Mm -hmm. So that oil is being burnt and, yep. and uses a high rate. Obviously, four cylinders doing that kind of contributes uh, pretty quickly. So, you know, a lot of people may have overlooked that, and of course, including us, uh, you know, could have overlooked that and sold a catalytic converter. And with a vehicle that's consuming that much oil, that converter would have been out yeah, very, very quickly. Wasted so money. It's just, you know, it's, it's just kind of a lesson on, on make sure you cross all your T's and dot your I's uh, because, you know, something like that can be a costly repair. So. Yeah, can be. All right. Okay, it is time to take a real quick break. And we when we return, we'll ha answer, we'll go to the phones. What? No, we'll go to Dominic. We'll do something. It. And <laughs> we will do something. And then we'll uh, share more tips and tricks that you can have for your vehicle. All, right. All that more with the CNC Auto Show. Now his guitar's can lack, he'll fill in music, lonely, lonely streets that I call home. And we welcome you to the CNC Auto Show. If you have a question about your car, truck, or SUV, Give us a call. That number is 706-863-5800. We're talking about tips and tricks for your cars, uh, things that uh, that your your car deserves. It's yep. been good to you all of this time. And also, I want to add something. If someone has a little trick mm -hmm. that they use for their car, for instance, I mentioned using trash bags and the that you get uh, or or using the bags that you would get at a grocery store little plastic bags as a trash can right uh, and a lot of other little things if someone knows of a good little tip or trick that they can do for their car yeah give us a call because I think it'd be great to share that with other people mm -hmm. all right now before we go to callers we are going to talk to Dominic on his uh, his thing that uh, his, his item that he has found during the week. Aaron, this is uh, one of the more interesting upcoming technologies that we got. It's uh, Toyota working on some mood-sensitive electronic systems. Mm, we don't want that. Yeah, I, I definitely don't because I know that I drive angry behind the wheel sometimes. And mm -hmm. uh, the, this system is uses cameras in the, uh, in the driver compartment mm -hmm. to um, read your facial expressions. And it'll adjust, it'll pick a different song to play on the radio if it detects that you're mad, if it detects that you're sleeping, it'll try to wake you up a little bit, or it'll, it'll tell you to pull over and go get some coffee or something. 
Uh-huh. So is this the is this the system that they're putting on the Toyotas? Is that what you mentioned? Yes. In in twenty twenty, I think. Yeah, they they released yeah. a concept car called the Toyota Pod. Yeah. That featured that supposed to feature, I guess, a very early version of this technology. Uh huh. Oh, and and also, if I'm not mistaken, the system will know the websites that you've been to, the Facebook uh, pages, the wow. ad- advertisements, the things that you have. Uh, uh, researched online, and it will know a lot about your personality. Then, does that sound right? Wow, that's crazy. That, yeah, that, the, that yeah, is that amazing. Right too, yeah. All right, fantastic. Okay, uh, we want to give some tips and tricks for the cars uh, that we have. This is one that I I'm not absolutely sure would be a great one, or how often you would use it, but it is one that that we looked up. If your windshield wipers were to happen to break uh in the rubber come off let's say winter time comes you're using it over icy windshields okay and the rubber breaks and the metal is touching your windshield stockings can make a good item to wrap around the metal part until you get to the shop to get the uh mm-hmm. to get that repaired okay so yeah i don't i don't completely uh lean on that one being being a great one okay now uh, another item that I think uh, now, of course, you've probably heard this one before. What's that? Is a plunger. Let's say you got the a dent. Okay. And uh, you want to pull the dent out of the car. A plunger. Could you at least have found a cleaner pitcher? <laughs> yeah, a toilet. A toilet plunger. That looks like a high mileage. Uh, can be used to go in and pull that dent out of the car. Right. Yep. I have actually seen that. Yeah, and and I think it has to be the exact right kind of dent mm-hmm. to be able to do that, though. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, maybe not a toilet plunger, but they definitely do make smaller suction cups that you can kind of you know pull. Uh, yeah, out of the and dent. there are some that's actually made for that. Mm-hmm. There are. Uh, that body shops use. So. Uh, uh, there's a lot of things like that. Now I'm going to mention one that, um, that I think is a really good one. And a lot of people, uh, probably use it already, but there may be some people that don't know about this, Okay. but that's buying one of the swimming noodles. Let's say you pull into your garage and every time you open your garage door, Mm -hmm. it hits something. Yeah. Uh, hits the wall in a certain place. Yeah. And you don't want to scratch up your door or scratch up the wall. Yeah. So. You cut the noodle in half, mm-hmm. and you just put it against the wall okay. in, in that area. Yeah. And then that way, or whatever length that you need from the noodle, that way when you open your car door, it hits the noodle That's instead cool. of the wall or, or whatever you want it to hit. Yeah, like the pipe insulation would work for that too. Yeah, pipe insulation would work Whichever's very well. Whichever cheaper, obviously. Yeah, so so in doing that, you can uh, you can save the uh, any scratches on your door. Yeah, uh, when you when you do that. Yeah, and of course, if you park next to someone at a parking lot, you could put the noodles on their door. <laughs> yeah, they'd appreciate <laughs> so, that, and they'll come out and they'll see a noodle stuck to their door. Yeah, <laughs> cool. All right, so uh, these are all great tips. Okay, another tip that I'm sure a lot of people have heard of, but there may be some that has not is the golf ball mm-hmm. hanging from the garage. Tennis ball. Uh, yeah, tennis ball. Yeah. <laughs> golf ball. <laughs> uh, but um, but a lot of times people have a hard time judging exactly how far to pull their car into the garage. Right. And they and so they pull it in, and then they have to get out. They find out the back end still hanging out some. Right. So they have to crank up and pull it back up a little bit more. Well, if you find out exactly where you want to park your car, mm-hmm. dangle the tennis ball down and yeah. cut the uh, cut the cord. You'll need two uh, a, a hook, yeah, uh, to screw in it, and possibly even the hook in the tennis ball or run it through the tennis ball. Yeah, and run it up there just where it dangles down and barely touch the windshield. That way, when you pull your car in, you can line it up in the center and pull it up to where it t- barely touches the windshield. That kind of makes me laugh because my truck will fit in my garage, but what happened was when I put the winch bumper and the uh, you know brush guard on the front, then it wouldn't. It was like eight inches you know, just shy of fitting in there. So, of course, what did I do? I cut a hole in the garage wall yeah. and framed it out so that the winch will go in the wall, and now the garage closes. Yeah, any any truck lover would do that. Of course. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Cut but the wall up. Don't, it does don't fit. touch the truck. I know. I made it look good. I mean, I sheetrocked it and everything. It doesn't necessarily look like a hole, but <laughs> you're ready to go to the calls. Yeah, let's go over to Alex. All right. Hey, Alex, hey, welcome Alex. to the CNC Auto Show, and what can we help you with? 
I've got an off the wall crazy question for you. Is that okay? Absolutely. Yeah, Aaron's right here. We're ready. <laughs> okay, I have a 2008 Chevy pickup with a service, like an aftermarket service body on it, you know, with the doors and everything. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so my utility gas tank type. is uh, mm-hmm. utility. That's right. That's right. So my gas tank goes, it's like an aftermarket, it goes to the standard tank or whatever, but it goes through the body. Mm-hmm. Well, the new gas pumps, I don't know what it is about the new Circle K and the new BP gas pumps, mm-hmm. You can't, I, it won't pump. You, I, I have to find an old station to uh, fill up that because the new stations, it keeps kicking it off, kicking, kicking it, it off, kicking it, it, it off. Mm-hmm. Is there anything I can do? I don't know the, about the new pumps. So I sure. can pump gas? Yeah, Alex, we have the solution to that. Uh, we're going to a real quick break. Would you mind holding? Sure. All right. All right, we'll be right back to answer Alex's pumping gas question as soon as we return. Round, round, get around. I get around. Yeah, get around, round, round. And we would like to welcome you back to the CNC Auto Show. We were talking to Alex about a gas pumping problem. Yeah. And he mentioned he has the utility bed yeah. on his vehicle. And it's got an aftermarket pump. Well, and filler, Alex, filler neck. Uh, a filler neck. And Alex, if I'm not mistaken, you mentioned that this vehicle, you can go to an older station and it seemed to pump okay, but you go to a newer yeah. station and it won't. Yeah, that's right. The new somehow the new pump, they uh, you know they click off. I can't even put it on the first click, and it it, it just shuts They're off. They're very and sensitive. Shuts off and shuts off. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alex, I have two things. Uh, the first thing is, by any chance, the check engine light on or anything like that. Check. I'll have to see if the check is light on. The only reason I say that is because aside from the fact that it has the work body on it, these trucks do uh, kind of exhibit a problem where if the vent solenoid for the evaporative emission system, if it actually is restricted or stuck closed, it doesn't allow the fuel to vent out. Of course, you're putting pressure in, so there has to be an escape for it. Um, so that's one thing. Um, that does happen on that truck in in its normal outfit, you know, being factory. But why would the old pumps work good? Well, and the, not old, the, new ones? the old pumps aren't as sensitive. What's that? Uh, I know it works off. It's of a the, certain psi that it it's like a kickback that. pressure. But uh-huh. the the uh-huh. older pumps, I don't know if it's like a standard. You know, say they only have to kick off at this pressure, uh-huh. versus the new ones that are very you know safety uh, you know safety first type pumps. Um, so that would be my answer for that. But besides that, you know, now that you said, of course, you had the work body on there, normally they, they actually extend the factory filler neck, and they normally use a two-and-a-half inch. It's a almost a corrugated uh, hose uh, that's really, really stiff so that, it, you know, it can make some pretty good bends. Uh, but what can happen, too, is it actually, you know, get kinked or restricted in that bend. Uh, but then again, that would still probably happen on the older pumps, so I'm just wondering about, you know, the fact of the uh, the EVAP system functioning uh-huh. properly. And Alex, I'm going to mention something, and Dominic mentioned something, our research department, uh, about this a little earlier also. But it, it, when you were talking, it brought back a vehicle uh, that I had worked on. It's been probably about two to three weeks ago, and this was a modified vehicle. It was actually a, a van, that had, uh, an adaptive van. And it was uh, it had was set up with a different uh, fuel Floor tank and all this and all other, stuff so that it had the wheelchair yeah. ramp and all that other stuff in there. All right, now what uh, they mentioned that they were having that trouble, and along with some other stuff, we got the other items taken care of. But I went, I was testing that out, and I put gas in it, and sure enough, clicked it, boom, it cut off. Clicked it, boom, cut off. It wouldn't let me put gas in uh, unless you did it at a snail's pace. I turned that up. I, at first, I tried pulling the nozzle out. No difference. I moved that nozzle around to about uh, 270 degrees. Uh, in other words, to the left just a little bit. And boom, that okay. joker went straight in there after that. It was just a matter of repositioning the angle that the nozzle was pushing it in at. At this point, I'll try just about anything. 
<laughs> would you would you try that and call us back and let us know if that but, made but any would, difference? You would still agree yeah, that will. something's not right. I mean, yeah, there it's should not be no, right. Yeah. But if you can overcome well, something by by doing that, he's gonna be out there spraying gas on it like a water hose. Yeah, but it, 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 yeah. in doing that, as opposed to spending money, I mean, always yeah. do that. Yeah. But I yeah. will mention yeah. well, when I told the person on that van what they did, they yeah. did it after that and said, "Yeah, it's absolutely fine now." And they just when they pump gas, they just hold the nozzle up. A, a little bit sideways right well a number of years ago i think they had screens on those so you couldn't siphon gas it, out is that correct it actually wasn't a screen that, that is kind of a standard thing it's an anti-rollover valve it's a ball in the very it's actually normally in the tank though uh, so if the vehicle, hopefully it would never happen, but if it flipped over the ball you know obviously occupies the space of the filler neck so that it won't spill out just wonder if that thing's uh, went crazy on me. You know, I don't know. Is that possible for well, that thing to it, get? It, anything's possible. If for it works sure. at an older station, then uh, I kind of doubt it because if that was stopped okay, up yeah, completely, yeah. it wouldn't go in at all. I still lean towards the emissions problem, the uh, evaporative emissions, the vent valve uh, being stuck close. Uh, just like I said before, you know, it's like blowing in a twenty ounce Coke bottle with no release. It's going yeah. to kick back on you. Mm -hmm. um, so I still lean a little bit that way. All right, well, I'll check it out and uh, see what I can figure out. I, Try I the position it, first, and if that don't work, then have diagnostics run. I will. Thank you. All right, thank All right, you very much. Good question. All right, number to call, 706-863-5800. If you have a question about your car, truck, or SUV, just give us a call. And we, uh, we're we talking about different things that you can treat your car with to, to make it happy. Uh, and one of the things would be laundry baskets in mm -hmm. the trunk. Okay. Uh, to keep kind your of trunk organized stuff, stuff organized. Yeah, there, a lot of times uh, people have uh, things like changes of clothes, which is uh, this time of year is a very good idea to do. Put your a, a coat in right. the car in case you break down and don't happen to have a coat in the car. You would have one uh, and a few things to, to grab like that. Uh, sometimes people may have work supplies and uh, just everyday things that you may have in different areas. But if you've got a few little small uh, baskets, if they'll fit in your trunk, yeah, then you can put all of these things in three different areas, like cleaning supplies for your car. Some people like to keep that stuff in their car. Mm -hmm. Well, having one little basket for that, another basket for your uh, soccer shoes. Yeah, your, or, or, or your, even like a crate or a tubware or something like that. Yeah, and, and just uh, a little something to organize the uh, the area inside the car would be a, a very good thing uh, to do. Now, another tip that we mentioned is one that, uh, that I mentioned a little earlier, mm -hmm. and, but I did want to mention it again. A lot of people think that uh, when you buy a uh, seat warmer, that it's good for just uh, the passenger, uh, the driver or passenger, to stay nice and warm. Right. But uh, another thing that a seat heater can be good for is when you pick your pizza up, <laughs> uh, you can cut the seat heater on and keep your pizza nice and toasty warm as you're going home. That's true. Now, some people like cold pizza. Right. And, and other people like warm pizza. But if you like the warm pizza, go ahead and cut the seat heater on when you pick the car up. I guess that would work, wouldn't it? Well, you mentioned that it's not a great idea because it might. Uh, I would have a problem putting it on, you know, most of them, of course, leather if they have a seat heater. Uh -huh. I'd hate for the pizza to drip through the box. It's just, I don't know, <laughs> a little OCD. Yeah, that, uh, that very, and that very well may. Okay. So, uh, so it's a good idea to to make sure that the pizza don't, does not have a lot of oil stuff on it. Yeah. Uh, when you, do I know it. I'm weird, but I don't live very far from a pizza place, so I actually always just set it on my toolbox in the bed of my truck. <laughs> you know, the easiest way to do that the the picture we got on the screen right now for our uh, radio listeners is two pizzas stacked on top of each other. You just eat the pizza out of the bottom box. Yeah, that's it. Out, out of the bottom, uh, out of the bottom boxes on there. Okay, some other things to do is keep an extra pair of sunglasses inside your car mm -hmm. uh, or some little, yeah, sometimes they make these little, um, sometimes people put these little tinted sheets mm -hmm. on the on the very top of the windshield. Hmm, I hadn't seen that. Yeah, so that as you're driving down the road uh, that you can be able to see uh, and be able to, to have the sun block. I guess kind of put it where you need it. sun does not block everything that's up there. Now, another favorite one that I have, uh, something that I enjoy uh, having, is a uh, it, 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 
is knowing what to do to keep from getting zapped or shocked when you get in your car this time of oh, year. Oh, static electricity. Yeah, static electricity is going to be a big thing this time of year. Uh, people getting in their car and and uh, the cooler temperature, especially if you have cloth seats. Yeah, you're going to get zapped mm-hmm. uh, from time to time, and especially if you're walking over. In some cases, either. Uh, getting out of the car and closing the door, you can get zapped, or walking over to your car to get in your car, yeah. sometimes you can get zapped. And what I always like to do is hold my knee or my elbow or mm-hmm. my, my arm mm-hmm. over to the car first before I reach over and grab the car, and it, 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 it makes it where you don't hardly feel the shock. So you just get zapped somewhere else. Yeah, you just get zapped somewhere else, but you I don't know, hardly. I know I have a habit of closing the door with my foot. Like with my shoe, you know? Uh-huh. I have that habit. It, exactly. And you do things like that to keep them getting zapped. Okay. We want to mention the Tech Tip Quiz uh, one more time. And the Tech Tip Quiz is Sherry lives in Flagstaff and works for Mary Kay Cosmetics. At 1 a.m., she left her home in Phoenix and drove two and a half hours to Flagstaff for an early meeting. On the way, she did something that made her look much younger. What did she do? Hmm. All right, now that is the, the the tech tip quiz. All right. And so if someone knows the answer to the tech tip quiz, they will win a, a tech tip quiz prize package that includes uh, you get the uh, CNC Auto Show hat or coffee mug and, of course, the I answer the tech tip quiz golf shirt. And included in that is just a lot of other little goodies that you right. get in with it. So don't hesitate to call uh, with, a, uh, with the tech tip quiz. Time for a quick break, Aaron. Oh, it's time for a real quick break. Uh, When we return, we'll cover more tips and tricks for your car as soon as we return with the CNC Auto Show. I've been driving all night, my hands wet on the wheel. There's a voice in my head that drives my heel. It's my baby calling since I need you here. And welcome back to the CNC Auto Show. I want to give another tip on things that you can do with your car. Keep a few shower caps in the car. Mm-hmm. You might ask me why. Why, Aaron? Well, shoes. If you got some shoes that uh, that you just want to store back there okay. and you don't want them to get dirty, like soccer shoes when you bring in the golf, kids from yeah. or golf shoes, <coughs> things like that, you, you can just stick them in the shower cap. No, oh, okay. And that way it keeps the car clean while the shoes stay back there. Would that also work for your Walmart bag that was already in there? Uh, well, you can use the Walmart bag if you <laughs> want to. A shower cap is kind of wraps around the shoes. That gotcha. works really good. Cool. Now, if you got a uh, if you got a kid that's um, very athletic and they're tennis put him in the shower cap. <laughs> been paying tennis, uh, been playing uh, basketball or anything like that for a while. You may want to use a bag and tie it off, or Just, the truck bed. Yeah, <laughs> or put it in the truck. <laughs> All right, you ready to go to the phones? Man, I am ready to go to the phones. Let's Where go over we to, going? Let's go over to Chess. Hey, Chess, welcome to the CNC Auto Show, and what can we help you with? I'd like to try to answer the tech tip quiz. Oh, man, you called the right place. Hold on, let us put you on the stage. <laughs> Chess, we are ready for you to answer our tech tip quiz. What is it? All right. Uh, well, you know, she was on the road for quite some time, uh-huh. and even though it's at night and it's not a good practice, she would probably put on her makeup from the time she left her house till when she arrived where she was going. Uh huh. So that, now, that's what made her look younger. Now I'm gonna give you an opportunity now if you decide to to keep it to keep your answer or change your answer, you'll <laughs> have the opportunity. We got to remember that um, that something happens in 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 most of the U.S. on Saturday night at the uh, it, it, and that would be on the 29th, October 29th, something happens at 2 a.m. and she left uh, she left to go to her her item at 10 no, at 1 and she was going to be driving two and a half hours. So something happens about now that you fall back on something you must be talking about daylight savings time well i don't know i'm just giving you the opportunity see your answer made sense yeah we're looking but for I mean, one that doesn't <laughs> but we we are going to give you the opportunity though chess now okay. which one are you going to stick with the makeup 
or are you going to go with the part having to do with the anything to do with daylight savings time? Well, I mean, I think he's going to hang up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the, the daylight savings time, she got an extra hour of sleep. Mm -hmm. That's one thing, but, uh -huh. you know. Where's she coming I'm still from? Late. Yeah. So you going to stick with the makeup? I, I'll just have to stick with the makeup. I, oh, I mean, Jess, I that was a good move, leave. man. <laughs> no, no, no. He's I know. Right. I was kidding. <laughs> he was messing with you. You're right. And um, <laughs> do you know why that it, it really would not apply in this situation? I do not. Well, she did sell Mary Kay Cosmetics, so she did rub some of that facial cream uh, as she was driving those two and a half hours at night. And, and it did make her look younger. And ordinarily, we would say that the time changed and she got a little extra sleep and made her look younger, except the fact that she was in Arizona. And Arizona does not go by the daylight savings time. So they do uh. not change, except the Navajo Nation there in Arizona uh, is the only area in, in Arizona that does that. That does follow the daylight saving time. So I can't believe he came up with that himself. Time would not apply. You are a hundred percent correct with what you answered about the makeup and the facial cream and all the other stuff that went with it. And we want to say congratulations to you. Cool. Yeah, and you are the winner. If you'll stay on the line just for a few minutes, they'll write all of your information and uh, and do a background check on you to make sure you're not that you are for real. And if everything works out well, we're going to see you here uh, to uh, get your prizes. Cool. All Looking right. forward to it. Thank you, Chess. We appreciate the phone call. Okay, Thank the you. number to call. Yeah. Thank you. The number to call is 706-863-5800. If you have a question about your car, truck, or SUV, uh, I want to mention a couple of things that happened uh, in automotive news uh, during the week. Get this now. A 10-year-old Ohio boy led the highway patrol officers on a high-speed chase Thursday morning, and at times they were reaching speeds of 100 miles an hour. Did you see any footage of that? No, I didn't see it. Did he, you? he actually could drive relatively well. Uh -huh. At 10 years old? 10 years old. Wow. You know what's crazy about that? A month before that, he stole somebody else's car. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. that's, what, that's what I was going to mention. That, and and, and he was, uh, they chased him and uh, at those speeds and then uh, – come to find out his mother was chasing him also yeah yeah during that same thing i, w I would like to see the, uh, the video of that one though and uh and he uh he was kind of kicking and screaming a little bit when he got arrested and or or they caught him uh, play stupid games win stupid prizes right uh, but that's that's not a bad thing another thing in the news and we'll be going to the uh, callers after this uh, General Motors is set to pay $120 million to resolve the claims from 49 U.S. states and the District of Columbia over faulty ignition switches. Uh, the automaker had settled over 200 ignition switch lawsuits, and the automaker has paid out $2.5 billion in penalties and settlements over the ignition switches uh, programs. And I will go ahead and mention one other one uh, on there. Montreal police gave a motorist a $117 ticket after pulling him over in September. His alleged crime loudly singing the 90s um classic Gonna Make You Sweat Everybody Dance Now by C plus C Music. And uh, they pulled him over and he started singing. Uh, he asked why he got pulled over. He said, uh, and he started singing the song when the officer pulled him over and the officer gave him the ticket. Let's try and squeeze in Tony here. Let's do it. A Tony. Uh, grinding noise from uh -huh. the front end of a Chevrolet Avalanche. Okay, you have a um, – Tony, welcome to the CNC Auto Show. And what can we help with? Well, uh, I've got a uh, 2003 Chevrolet Avalanche, and I'm getting a grinding noise coming from the, the, the front end. Uh -huh. And it sort of goes along with the speed of the vehicle. The faster the, the vehicle goes, the the quicker the sound is. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't – I checked the – I pulled the wheel. Well, I lifted the truck up first and sort of wiggled the wheel. I'm thinking, you know, either brake pads or wheel bearings or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I lifted the truck, and I 
I looked and the brake pads seem to be okay. They have about 50% of their life left. And I tried to wiggle the wheel, and, and it doesn't seem to have a whole lot of play in it. And I'm just wondering, what else could it be besides those two things? Uh, Tony, is this vehicle four-wheel drive? Uh, it's a two-wheel drive. It is two-wheel drive. Does the noise yes. change tones when you uh, say was slight, you do a slight veer to the right versus left? Uh, no, it does not. It, it, it seems to be pretty constant, pretty constant. Uh, but it, it changes sometimes at speed. It, it started happening on the way home from a out of town trip the other day. Right. And, uh, if I slowed down, it, you really hardly hear it at all. And then as, as the speed increased, sometimes it got a little bit louder and, and, and you feel, like a grinding type you feel pretty confident it's from the front, not the rear. It couldn't be like a pinion uh, bearing or something like that as a differential. Uh, the only reason I, I say I feel, is normally yeah. a bearing would change tones if you, you know, say went around a right hand turn or a if left hand turn. Mm -hmm. If it's the front, mm -hmm. if it was something that is kind of consistent in noise, you know, that's that's more of something that, of course, does is is fixated, meaning like it it doesn't turn. Uh, you know, weights distributed evenly on it. Um, so I would suspect oh, okay. something in the differential because differential noise will travel up the vehicle. Um, Tony, we are all out of time. If you want two things, you can give us a call next show or you can post that to our Facebook and we could answer it there. Or, of course, give us a call at the shop. Yeah, we would love to answer that on Facebook. Time clock's on E. We're, we have to pull over for now. Uh, I'm Aaron Clements with co-host John Ryan Mooney, show producer Dominic Frito, and Sandy Klein, technical engineer Zach Llewellyn. And I'd all like to say thank you to all of you that tuned in and logged in to the CNC Auto Show.